Welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. A press conference sparked some controversy this morning regarding crime in the city of Alexandria. ABC 31's Joanna Phillips has the story. Crime is no stranger to the city of Alexandria. A press conference outside of City Hall this morning, held by Councilman Ed Larvadane III, addressed the growing amount of crime in the city. We're a small city. We have 47,000 people. We carry guns as if we're a city of New York or Chicago. Our numbers are horrible. If, we've, if we have 17 killings, if we don't get a grip on this, we're gonna have about 24 at the end of the year. That's horrible. I don't want those killings. I don't want mothers to have to bury young people. I don't want all the killing. It has to stop. The press conference seemed to insinuate that action has not been taken when it comes to the elimination of crime. The problems that we have in Alexandria and surrounding areas, it can't be resolved up here at City Hall. It has to include the sheriff, the DA, state police, federal agencies, and the community. But Alexandria Mayor Jock Roy spoke with us shortly after the conference to provide his own statement. I did not see the entire press conference that I know occurred just now in front of this interview, but let me just point out a few things of what I did see. Um, unfortunately, uh, perhaps sometimes the headline-seeking part obscures or clouds the work part. And the work is done day in and day out by the folks who are uh, wearing those uniforms um, and put in harm's way and also by the community who are the victims of these crimes and who are concerned and scared and should be about some of the things that are occurring. It's a debate of elected officials that's been active for quite some time. And with the overall crime rate in Alexandria being 266 percent higher than the national average, this issue isn't going away anytime soon. Joanna Phillips, ABC 31 News. Vernon deputies are seeking information about 30-year-old Zachary Mosley of New Lano. He's wanted in connection with a homicide in New Lano yesterday. He could be driving a 2008 white Honda Accord, which is a four-door sedan. He is considered armed and dangerous. Please call authorities right away if you know his whereabouts. A local hospital orderly is charged with raping an elderly patient with dementia. It's 27-year-old Juan Tavies White of Alexandria. Alexandria police say it happened today and he was caught by another employee. Rapids Regional Medical Center has issued the following statement, quote, Rapids Regional Medical Center took immediate action to contact authorities and terminate the employee. We will continue to work with law enforcement to provide information and assistance as needed. An eviction notice in Grand Parish results in an arrest of 50-year-old Michael Richkey. Deputies say they discovered jumper cables attached to the electric meter and 10 malnourished dogs. He's charged with cruelty to animals and utility theft. Today we caught up with Billy Nungesser at the Rotary Club. He gave us the scoop on how he plans to help taxpayers save money and to expand tourism. Absolutely. Right now, uh, you know, when I took office, they said state parks will never make money. Well, just running a little bit more like a business, two state parks last make made money for Louisiana. I think we can see a day where all of our state parks will generate revenue. We're now looking at timber cutting, uh, selling the alligator tags, uh, all the things we can do with these great assets to, with private-public partnership to bring revenue in so we don't have to keep going back to the taxpayer to fund our state parks and museum system. Nunn Gesser says the budget will always be a problem, but he is working to bring private money into the state parks so that they won't have to rely solely on tax revenues. James Carville, the well-known political commentator and media personality, is coming to Alexandria on November 7th. He'll speak to the Alexandria Rotary Club about William Tecumseh Sherman, the, president, the first president of LSU, which of course was founded in Pineville. Carville is an LSU grad and is now teaching there. Popular former commanding general of Fort Polk is retiring. Major General Clarence K.K. Chin served at Fort Polk and the JRTC from January 2011 through November 2012. He led the U.S. Army South since 2015. His change of command ceremony happened in San Antonio at Fort Sam Houston. We can expect to see more fall-like weather after today. Meteorologist Kim Walker is here with a first look at our forecast. 
Well, after record-setting heat, temperatures will take a slight dip in uh, as we move our way toward the end of the week. But uh, it's going to be still a bit on the warm side, above normal for the next uh, few days. 64 degrees at 7 o'clock by lunch hour, 73 degrees. Our highs, once again, will be around 85 when we should be uh, close to around 80 degrees. And then mostly sunny at 5 o'clock with a reading around 85. And we are going to see, though, uh, rain chances return as we make our way toward the weekend. It looks like we're going to have to wait for maybe a week before fall like conditions. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. All right, thanks, Kim. Are your kids toys or clothing a hazard? ABC 31 Char Thomas explains why you should check for recall items. Over 100 children's products are recalled a year due to a variety of factors from the largest to the smallest details. Buying toys and other necessities such as children's clothing may seem harmless, but Attorney General Jeff Landry is urging guardians and parents to be mindful of their purchases. Several dozen children's products have been recalled this year, already outpacing 2016 recalls. This time of year is very important as parents begin to purchase Christmas, birthday, and baby shower gifts because there are recalls on particular clothing and popular toys. Checking your products for recalls is an important step in protecting your home and your children from common hazards. Owner of Two Cute Kids, Carrie Davis, says they take extra precaution when it comes to not selling recall items by using consumer safety database. Um, it's tricky because most people don't think about um, bibs or clothing as um, recallable or something that they need to check. Um, a lot of people watch things like car seats or cribs, so it's it's definitely consume, you know, confusing for the the customer and our everyday consumer to know to look at everything and how to stay on top of that. If you have any of these products, stop using them immediately. You are eligible for repairs or refund. For more information on recalls and their remedies, visit aggjefflandry.backslash safety box. Char Thomas, ABC 31 News. Past president of the Kiwanis Club of Alexandria, Greg Beard, is now a member of the International Kiwanis Club. The club has a current project aimed at kids and their education. We pride ourselves a lot with um, our kids, and that's what Kiwanis is all about, is touching kids' lives, making it better for them through signature projects of development, skills, their self-esteem. We have a Terrific Kids program. What Terrific Kids is all about is going into the middle schools, the elementary schools, and developing a program with the teachers of helping those kids with their self-esteem, with their plan of education, making it, recognizing them for what they do in their classroom and then having a party for them probably at midterm and at the end of the year. You can visit KiwanisofAlexandria.com to learn more about their club and their kids program. The Louisiana Holiday Trail of Lights held a news conference this afternoon. Officials from participating cities updated attendees on returning new and expanding features for the holiday season. The City of Alexandria's 12 Nights of Christmas will begin on November 30th with the third annual Alex Winter Fets. The nine schools of the University of Louisiana system have a new goal for the number of college graduates by 2025. You know, our, our presidents came together and developed a plan that I think is worthy of our system, worthy of the rich history of our institutions. They said that we're going to produce 150,000 new graduates who are prepared for jobs, who are prepared for careers, who are prepared for life by the year 2025. That's about a 20% increase in, in our previous year's productions. Uh, when we reach that, we'll start to reach a level of educational attainment that makes Louisiana competitive. The system includes Northwestern State University in Natchitoches. Well, just because the calendar says fall, weeds and lawns are still growing and setting seeds to emerge next spring. So now's a good time to take care of the number one weed pest throughout the southeast. A horticulturist with the LSU Ag Center gives us some tips on how to control Virginia buttonweed. Every seed that's going to germinate this year will last and persist until next spring and then continue to grow. It's called Virginia buttonweed and unfortunately for many homeowners, it can be found just about everywhere. Each of these white flowers will set two seeds with each having nearly a 100% chance of germinating. Many yards across South Louisiana flooded last year, damaging lawns and giving the weed a foothold. 
it has a very prostrate growing habit and so it'll begin to spread out and take over the lawn, not allowing any of your turf grass to grow through it. Rouse says buttonweed cannot be eradicated, but there are some herbicide control options. The ambient temperature is critical in determining which product is used. Under 85 degrees, we want to spray a product containing 2,4-D in our lawn. We don't want to spray that above 85 degrees as it'll kill out some of the lawn that we're trying to keep. If the temperature is above 85 degrees, Rouse recommends using a product with the active ingredient metsulfuron. It is safe on lawns consisting of St. Augustine, Zoysia, Bermuda, and centipede grasses. Even though it is safe for these grasses, expect to see some differences in your lawn. Do expect some yellowing in the grass. It will kill out the Virginia buttonweed, but you will have a little bit of yellowing in there. Don't be alarmed by this. It'll pop right back out of that. With cooler fall temperatures approaching, some may want to wait to treat with 2,4-D because it is less expensive. This waiting may come with a cost. So if you want to take the approach of that maybe we'll wait until winter or when it gets under 85 degrees to use the 2,4-D approach, know that every one of those flowers is going to continue to set seed and you're going to have a bigger problem next spring. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting. Rouse well, suggests that homeowners should place patches of sod down after killing significant areas of buttonweed to keep other weeds from taking over the newly exposed ground. To you, it's just an old coat, but to an underprivileged child, it's a warmer winter. Please help us collect coats for kids before the cold months get here. You can drop off new or gently used coats at a location near you. All coats are cleaned and distributed right here in our community. The KLAX Coats for Kids Drive is sponsored by First Federal Bank, Southern Heritage Bank, Bank of Montgomery, Kramer Funeral Home, Take 5 Oil Change, South Park Cleaners, and LaSalle Printing and Office Supply. Well, it's been a hot day with temperatures climbing into the 90s across the area. So hot that it actually tied some records. 93 degrees uh, was the previous high in Alexandria, and we tied that today. 92, a record in Lake Charles. 88, though, only uh, there in Leesville. 89, Lafayette. In Natchez, it was 91 degrees. So it felt like summer out there. But I think it's going to be a little bit cooler as we move into tomorrow. A little bit more comfortable, but it's still going to be unseasonably warm. We have a few showers and thunderstorms to Hours south. I think most of that will remain there uh, through this evening and into the overnight. As you can see, our future radar is showing it will just stick down uh, just to our south and it just uh, maybe a few that will move through uh, in the eastern counties or actually the eastern parishes and they will just uh, start to fizzle away in the overnight hours. I think we're going to start off with mostly sunny conditions for tomorrow morning uh, as we make our way to the rest of the day. We're going to see plenty of sunshine, decreasing clouds, cooler and not quite as humid, but still going to feel a little bit muggy out there. Summer like conditions, though, return late in the week, and then we're going to see a possible cool down by next week. Temperatures right now is 88 degrees in Alexandria, and Leesville is 81 degrees, 84 in Lake Charles, and Lafayette is 85 degrees, so still very mild out there. 70 degrees is what our dew point is, and so you know, our 88 feels more like a 95, so it still is a little bit warm and a little bit sticky, but I think our dew points will be dropping in the next couple of days due to uh, air that's coming in from the north, so it's a little bit drier and a little bit cooler. And this comes complements of high pressure that will build into the region, so a little bit less humid, but even with that said, it's going to be a little bit sticky in uh, parts of the area, and we're still going to see very uh, unseasonably warm weather. So here's a look at your forecast. Temperatures tonight will drop down into the lower 60s, partly cloudy. Winds will be light coming from the north, northwest, and then tomorrow look for highs around 85 degrees. So a lot cooler than today, partly sunny, not as hot, not as humid. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. That, that will be very brief because we will be close to around 90 degrees or right at 90 degrees uh, for your Friday. Plenty of sunshine through the weekend. 90s is going to be hot and humid, but then a cold front comes through and that will knock those temperatures down into the 70s by early next week. Maybe a chance of shower or two as well, but then those temperatures will rebound back into the 80s on Tuesday. Scott. All right, thank you, Kim.
Coming up after another conference loss, the Demons are hoping to build off a strong defensive performance. Hi everybody, this is the voice of the Tigers, Jim Hawthorne, inviting you to watch Inside LSU Football, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors on this affiliate of the LSU Sports Television Network every week during the season. We'll have all the highlights, exclusive locker room access you won't see anywhere else, and features that will give you the inside story on your Fighting Tigers football team. Inside LSU Football, join us Sundays at 10 on KLAX TV. Brought to you in part by Randy Wiggins State Farm Agent. The NSU football team back to work this week after another heartbreaking conference loss this past weekend. Now, there was a lot of good that the Demons could take out of that recent defeat, especially on the defensive side of the ball where the Demons played probably their best game of the year. The first series wasn't good, but uh, after that we were lights out, shut them out the second and the third, and then until four minutes to go in the fourth they got that last one, but um, two touchdowns, that's... That's a good uh, defensive effort. That, that's what you want. You want to only give up about 17, but 14, it was good. It was a good performance. Demons will look to bounce back on Saturday against Sam Houston State. Now, the NSU volleyball team riding high after a pair of wins this past weekend against conference opponents. The Demons didn't lose a single set in either match and may finally be starting to gel. It really came together, and especially after not having such a great start in conference. You know, we use those losses as a learning experience and just to use that to build as a team. We'll definitely bring some confidence in these games, but we're going to stay focused and um, on winning and the scout and what we can do to win the match, but definitely the confidence will take in. Lady Demons are next in action on Thursday night against McNeese. All right, well, Kim, let's take one last look at our forecast. Well, I think it's going to be slightly cooler tomorrow, but still above normal 85 degrees, not as hot, and it's going to be not as humid. Temperatures will drop down into the 50s early uh, Thursday morning, and then we're going to be back into the 90s by the end of the week and into the weekend. But the good news is there's going to be another cold front that will come through, and that will possibly put an end to our summer-like conditions by Monday. I expect a little bit of cloud cover. Temperatures around 78 degrees. So it's going to feel a little bit more like fall and then back into the 80s by Tuesday. All right. Thank you, Kim. Thanks for watching ABC 31 News. Have a great night. When it comes to cleaning up the streets of Boston. This is who I am. This is what I do. Now get me in there. He did it. And I know where the proof is. It's Ladies First. Rizzoli and Isles. Weekends at 11 on KLAX TV. When a case seems unsolvable, they see the incredible. Murder. Motive. Secrets. Bones. Weekends. Watch Bones. Weekends on KLAX ABC 31. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> oh, I can't get enough of this video. Right This Minute is TV's number one daily viral video show. Right This Minute. Watch Right This Minute, weekdays at 5 on KLAX-TV.